Welcome to this in-flight tutorial. At InFlights, we provide drone mapping data to our clients worldwide. If you don't have an account with us, please register one at inflights.com slash pilot. In this video, we'll talk about ground control points, also known as GCPs for short. To put it simple, GCPs are large targets marked on the ground that you measured coordinates of with a survey grade equipment. GCPs are used to georeference the project in a chosen coordinate system. This means that the project can be used by surveyors, architects and other engineers. It also ensures that the project has correct scale, so all the measurements on the drone mapping outputs are accurate. Minimum of three GCPs are required to situate the project, but to achieve good accuracy, we always use five or more GCPs depending on the project size. There are three main things that we will go over in this tutorial. GCP distribution across the project. This means setting the GCPs in the right location. Proper marking of GCPs. It is important to choose the correct marking pattern for GCPs. Measuring GCPs. Few tips how to accurately measure your GCPs. Let's start with the first one. GCP distribution inside the area of interest is very important because it directly affects accuracy of the drone mapping data. The GCPs should be spread evenly across the project area. Each GCP should have an open sky view. This means that GCPs should be placed far away from trees, buildings, fences, cars, road signs and other objects. If possible, have at least one GCP in the tallest place of your project. Once we selected you as a pilot for a project, you'll have access to the project details. In our in-flights dashboard page, you will see the needed number of GCPs to set and KML file with a project boundary. Before we begin, please download and install Google Earth Pro. It is a free computer software that you can download online. Google Earth Pro allows you to inspect the project area and plan GCP location. Once you downloaded the KML file with a project boundary from the InFlights dashboard, open it in Google Earth Pro. Here are some important tips to keep in mind with GCP distribution pattern. Start at the corners of the project and later place some GCPs at the edges. After that, plan them evenly across the middle. GCPs should be evenly spread across entire area of interest. Avoid clustering GCPs close to each other. When you fly using KML, always set a margin in your drone mission planning software. Use between 15 and 30 meters margin. Plan GCPs in pairs or in zigzag pattern. Planning GCPs in single line will cause errors. This is important for mapping narrow areas, like a road. Add additional GCPs at the highest and lowest areas. The larger the survey area, the more GCPs are needed. Non-RTK drones require GCPs every 100 meters instead of 600 meters for RTK or PPK equipped drones. The GCP location that you plant in Google Earth is meant only to navigate you to the area of a GCP. When there is a new obstacle like a car or a new building near the pin, then set the GCP a bit further inside the project area. Thanks for watching, see you in the next part.